Hi, my name is Isaac Rosenfeld. I am a Solaris product manager. Welcome to the next installment of the Solaris screencast series. I am proud to have with me today Girish Modalbeil, one of the senior core kernel architects on Solaris Network Engineering team, for the purposes of talking about and demoing one of the hot new features in Solaris 11.2 called the Elastic Virtual Switch. Girish, why don't you take us through what this new feature is, what it means, and take us through the demo. Over to you. Thanks, I said thanks so much. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Girish, as I said, introduced. Uh, before we actually jump into the demo, I would like to quickly go over four slides that I have. Uh, the idea here is basically to familiarize, familiarize everyone with uh, the terminologies that I'm going to use uh, during the demo and then kind of a give a quick overview of what Elastic Virtual Switch feature is. Um, Oracle Solaris provides a built-in SDN solution called Elastic Virtual Switch. It actually provides a virtual networking infrastructure to interconnect virtual machines in a data center. It also provides infrastructure to manage IP addresses for virtual machines, manage MAC addresses for virtual machines, and also to manage SLAs, uh, like bandwidth, maximum bandwidth and priority for these V ports, which actually the VMs connect to. It also provides an end-to-end -end V port statistics, uh, uh, and then you can deploy these virtual networks uh, basically L2 network segments on um, either using VLANs or using VXLANs. So in our demo, I'll be walking through each of these and then mostly we'll be using VLANs for the demo today. Um, the other important thing about EBS is that it's very tightly integrated with Solaris server virtualization feature, basically Solaris zones. Uh, we support both native zones and thermal zones uh, within this feature. So another thing that we have done is basically we have written down uh, a plugin for OpenStack Neutron component. Using that plugin, now you can control EVS feature from OpenStack uh, dashboard, basically Horizon. Again, it's very important for us to understand various components of EVS framework before we kind of delve into the demo. There are three main components, EVS Manager, EVS Controller, and EVS Node. EVS Controller is the main component of all the three. It actually provides APIs for EVS Manager and the EVS nodes to connect to it and communicate with it. It has a global view of the entire virtual networking infrastructure in the data center. Um, it provides IP address management and MAC address management for uh, the virtual machines that get instantiated in the data center. And by the way, there can just be one EVS Controller in the entire data center, and this controller has a global view. If HA is a concern, then we could have EVS controller in the HA mode to make sure that uh, if one controller goes down, the other controller takes up the, the, the job of uh, uh, managing the virtual networking infrastructure. The second component is the EVS manager. Uh, it's basically an EVS ADM tool that is used to define the virtual topology that I mentioned By virtual network topology, I mean the kind of networks they need, the subnets associated with the network, how many VMs they want in that subnet. So this information they can define using the new EVS ADM tool that's part of 11.2 and then push that information to the controller. So that's how controller has a global view of all the virtual networking infrastructure in the data center. The third and final component is the EVS node. EVS node is a physical machine that's going to host all your virtual machines, right? Virtual machine for our case is a Zolaris zone, which could be as a native or kernel zone. So these physical machines would host Oracle zones, Solaris zones, and these zones kind of connect to our EVS network by pulling up the information from the EVS controller. All of these nodes can be actually installed on a single component. If you want to kind of play with EVS feature before deploying it full scale, you can run all these components on the same box get some hands-on as to how all this works, and then slowly move them into their own boxes or, comp or into their own physical machines. Um, next slide. So here you can see that there are two tenants, red tenant and blue tenant. Red tenant has expressed what it needs, and, uh, and then so is blue tenant. So red tenant here needs three virtual machines. They're all part of the same subnet 30.0 24. Blue tenant needs two virtual machines, and both the VMs are part of 40.0 slash 24 network. 
And now, given this virtual topology, how are we going to overlay that on the physical, uh, on top of the physical network that we have? Towards, on the right of the slide, we have two physical machines, which are the two EVS nodes. They're connected through a network fabric. And then you have a controller and manager running on a separate box. Um, how we have kind of provisioned the three red VMs are, the two red VMs are on EVS node 1, and the third red VM is on EVS node 2. These three VMs are connected to an elastic virtual switch red network. The three VMs can talk to each other, see each other, ping with each other. Uh, that's the elastic, elastic part of it. If the red VM were to migrate back to EVS node 1, then the elastic virtual switch would shrink just to EVS node 1. Right? So that's the elasticity feature of elastic virtual switch. So as and when VMs show up on various physical machines, the elastic virtual switch uh, characteristics kind of uh, is inherited or it kind of pushed into that EVS node. The three simple steps to get uh, a VM up and running that is connected to an elastic virtual switch. So the first step, of course, is to define the virtual topology. You would do that on a manager node and then use EVS ADM tool to define uh, a L2 network. In this case, it's called red network. Associate a subnet with that and then define three V ports because you need three VMs. So you do this, at the end of executing these commands, the entire virtual topology information is pushed into the controller. The controller is now aware of the red network, the subnet associated with the red network, and the ports associated with the red network. On one of the EVS nodes, that's the EVS node one, you would basically go ahead and create a zone profile, in this case VM1, and then say that this VM1 should have a, have a virtual interface or an ANET that belongs to a red network and it should connect to vport 0. You go, out, go ahead and then install the zone and you boot the zone. When the zone is coming up, it knows that it has to go to the controller to pull up information about vport 0 and then it inherits all the vport information and then passes it all that vport information to the local VNIC that gets created for that particular VM. So vPort is just an encapsulation of various properties um, like IP address, MAC address, SLA, that is maximum bandwidth and class of service. And when VNIC gets created inside the zone, the, that VNIC will inherit the vPort properties. Uh, I'll walk, walk uh, all of this in the demo that uh, I'm going to give in a short time. The, finally, to kind of uh, verify what has happened, you would use the ADM show VNIC minus C subcommand, and then it would you can clearly see that VM1's net zero is connected to um, tenant red's EVS network red network at V port V port zero. And that particular VNIC has a MAC address. So this MAC address was kind of uh, generated for the VNIC by the EVS controller. So now it's time for us to jump into the demo.